Welcome everybody to another series of APTV, Meeting Our Partners. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Daniel Kimpton from State of Matching. Hey Dan. Hi Jamie, how you doing? Very good, thank you, very good indeed. So today we're doing a, a focus on our partners, Dan, and I wondered if you could introduce yourself to our audience, as well as give us some background on statement matching, please. Yeah, sure. So, hi everyone. Um, so, yeah, my, my name's Daniel Kimpton. I work for Statement Matching and, uh, yeah, I've been doing accounts payable for a long time. So, I've been really camped out in accounts payable doing process improvement projects since about 2005. Um, so, yeah, very familiar with the accounts payable process and, and what your pains are, you know, we, we feel them. And, um, yeah, kind of statement matching, you know, what does it do? Um, so I think anyone in accounts payable, you know, one of the first, the, one of the first things that you get to do when you're, uh, when you're a lowly that sort of AP clerk is you have to go and reconcile statements, you know, which people tend to do manually, you know, with their statement printed off, looking at, looking them up line by line, crossing things off, seeing what's to match, what's missing. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, quite a tedious task. So we've got something which, uh, our customers think is a godsend, which is um, a cloud-based solution, which actually automates the process. So you can you can put your Excel, PDF, and even paper statements if you still get them. You can upload them to the cloud, and then the solution automatically reconciles the statement against your accounts payable ledger. Tells you what's missed, um, tells you what's matched, tells you what's missing. Uh, tells you about invoices that you have on the ledger that are not on the statement. So, you know, missed postings. And then it tells you if you've got any data errors. So maybe you've got the invoice, but the invoice numbers are different. So it automates the reconciliation process and then gives you tools to manage the exceptions. So you can log in, go and look at the exceptions um, and then contact your suppliers, you know, to say, right, you know, I've reconciled your statement. I've got all of these. These, these are the dates for payment uh, and these ones are missing so send me a copy and then you can kind of set flags and follow-ups in the system to ensure that if you've put an action on someone like a vendor to send a missing document you know look at it again at the end of the month and, and make sure that they've done it um, and then of course we've got we've got all the data in the system so we can do, do reporting so we can actually quantify the errors and we can look at which are your uh, poorly performing vendors you know why have you got vendors with lots of invoices missing every month you know why don't we go and look at what the root causes are so yeah it's a really nice um you know cloud-based system that actually accounts payable people when we show them it they're like i can't believe it's taken this long for someone to come up with a, an application that does this because you know they they just can't understand why, why, why it took so long so yeah no it's good and we've been doing statement matching's been around now since um, late 2014 we launched it and we've got about 50 customers globally so and probably another um, I think probably this year we probably added or by the end of the year we will have added getting on for an additional 20 customers so yeah it's That's good the intro Dan and I think the um, I think I agree with you that we speak to so many members and customers ourselves and when we talk about an automated way of doing statement reconciliation it's it's as though you should have been speaking to them years ago and some of them have heard of you, some of them haven't, but yeah. it is, it's a manager's best friend and that's the way I, I refer it to. And uh, I think in the current climate with people unfortunately losing jobs, downsizing teams, etc., I think the mantra of doing more with less comes out quite a lot. Are yeah. you hearing that when you're talking to customers? Yeah, we are. Um... And also, you know, statements is, all, is always the kind of uh, poor relation to invoices in a way because accounts payable, you have to get invoices onto the system when you want to pay suppliers on time. You know, that's, your, that's what you're measured on every day. And often statements get forgotten. But any kind of AP manager, you know, worth their salts knows that actually, you know, checking the statements is the way that you make sure your ledgers are accurate. Um, and we're actually seeing a lot of customers now um, saying, well, you know, statements are really important because actually we've got a lot of suppliers in our supply chain who are smaller than us. And obviously, you know, business is difficult at the moment and people are really focused on, you know, paying their suppliers on time. And there's, that's been going on a while because of the prompt payment code and everything. But we're seeing a lot of customers saying, right, well, we should be doing our statements every month because it's another, it's the, it's another 
um, way to actually catch, well, I haven't got these invoices, so I've got no chance of paying them, paying them on time. Yeah. So we're seeing a lot of that at the moment. And, you know, and with people working from home, you know, it's cloud-based, people access it via a browser, and it's really easy to implement. We don't have to go to people's sites. Everything's done via the web anyway, and always has been with statement matching. So it's kind of, um, you know, we have seen a bit of an acceleration, if anything, you know, during what's been going on. Yeah, and, and this year, as you know, Dan, we, we're our conference is going virtual. You know, it's yep. uh, not my choice. We're doing it virtual, but we're as live as we possibly can. And one of the big topics this year is the topic of the whole conference is um, the evolution of accounts payable. And a big topic towards the back end of the day is around accounts payable fraud. So again, yep. you mentioned that people working from home, and I think you're, you're right that a lot of AP functions really could do with probably reconciling more and more statements, but don't have the resource or, you know, uh, the people around them and the process to support that. So again, I, su I assume that your, your system supports the global war on fraud, if you like. So that's got to be a big positive of your solution as well. Yeah. Yeah. And again, it's about checking, it's about checking what the supplier's telling you that you owe and then what you've actually got on your books. And if you've got erroneous postings on the vendor's account, you know that just shouldn't be there or maybe you know you've got a lot of duplicates and then when you when you look at the errors you kind of think well that's actually a, a bit you know that's a funny document because the invoice numbers are in a completely different sequence you know there's eight digits instead of six or something you know it does kind of feed it doesn't it doesn't hit directly on the fraud but again fraud's about making sure that your ledgers are accurate which you know we certainly do hit on yeah, perfect. And as I mentioned, Dan, so we're not we're not going to have a physical conference this year. And I think I know you were very keen to meet with our audience this year as a brand new. Yeah. Partner. So the virtual conference is on the 20th of October. So tell us what you're looking forward to, Dan, during the on the 20th itself. Yeah, just being there to support, really, because like you said, it's the we can't be there. None of us can be there physically. Um, and, you know, we'd all like to be because it's good to meet people. I think the whole face to face thing, you know, I, I, I don't know about you, but I really miss it. Yeah. Um, but we can't be there physically. So we'll be there virtually uh, looking forward to talking to people. Um, you, know, if, you know, if people want to talk to us on the day, that'd be amazing. Um, and yeah, we'd love to show you statement matching and, and show you how, you how it could work for your organization. So, yeah, come and see us at the conference. Brilliant. As I say, we've got virtual booths, so they can come and talk to you, Dan. They can do a virtual one-to-one. -one. They can have a one-to-one -one like this on a Zoom yeah. call with you um, and, and maybe share a virtual coffee or a beer, depending on what time you're talking to them. Yeah, yeah, any time, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so, look, we're really looking forward to hosting on the 20th. Thanks for giving us an overview of Statement Matching today. Hopefully, we'll get some leads for you on the 20th as well, so you can engage with the audience. Yeah, more importantly, so. we'll... We're looking forward to hosting you next year when we go live and we go back into a face-to-face -face environment more, more often than not. Yeah, that's it. Bring on 2021. That's what I say. Same here, Dan. Same here. Yeah. Thanks ever so much. All right. Thanks, then, Jamie. Look forward to meet, seeing everyone at the conference. Brilliant. Thanks, Dan. Speak to you soon. All right. See you later. Bye.